Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and dear friends. I, Dr. Aniruddha Babar, your host uh, for today's webinar, is going to be organized uh, by Dot Talks webinar series. Welcome to all. Today is a special day for us because we have a special guest with us, and that is Julio Francis Ribeiro, fondly known as Ribeiro Saheb in the, in the uh, police circle of Maharashtra. Julio Francis Ibero, born on 5th May 1929 in Mumbai and graduated in commerce and law from Bombay University. He joined the Indian Police Service in 1953 and rose to be the Commissioner of Police Mumbai from February 1982 to May 1985. Later, he served in quick succession as Director General, Central Reserve Police, Director General of Police, Gujarat, Special Secretary to the Government of India's Home Ministry, Director General of Police, Punjab, and finally, advisor to the gov governor of Punjab. Besides other awards, he is the recipient of the Padma Bhushan in 1987. Post retirement, Sir was appointed ambassador to Romania, where he served for four years from 1989 to 1993. Sir also runs two NGOs the Mohalla Committee Movement Trust, that is MCMT, for communal harmony in the city of Mumbai and the Public Concern of Governance Trust, PCGT, for good governance to fight corruption also in Mumbai City. We are really privileged to have, sir, to speak on the very interesting topic, and that is depoliticizing the police. Considering the today's scenario and the political context, this topic is very important, not only <clears throat> for the democratic fabric of this country, but also its future. Sir, on behalf of uh, Tetso College and uh, Tetso.com's webinar committee, I welcome you and request you to take a charge of this virtual stage and please begin with your presentation. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Babar. It's a very important topic, I agree. And I'm very happy that people seem to be getting interested in it now. I've been trying to get the public interested in this topic, writing about it, but nobody seems to bother. They don't understand what police reforms mean, for instance. They think it means that uh, the police should become more amenable to the public, that they should be polite, that they should talk well. All that is true, but that depends upon the leadership of the police. The leader can always ensure that that is done. But when we talk about police reforms, it means depoliticizing the police. Because if the police uh, act according to what the party in power wants and not according to the law of the country, then the police is not doing the job that it had been set up to do. The police is a very important arm of the government. It is its most uh, you know, visible arm. And people more or less uh, understand that this is government. This is the representative of government. There are two uh, big government agencies in the city of Mumbai, for instance, big city, a metropolis, with Mo, uh, which is one of them is the police. And the other is the municipality, headed by a municipal commissioner, who usually is from the IAS. So you have these two who really matter to the ordinary person. Now, what is politicization? How is the police politicized? It is politicized by the misuse of the power of appointments and transfers. This is the one line answer to the question of how the police gets politicized. Now, this power of appointments and transfers as you know, even in Nagaland, vests with the, with the state government. And when you talk about the state government, there are two ministers who are uh, involved. One is, of course, the chief minister to whom every uh, important decision uh, goes. And then there is the home minister who is in charge of the department. Now, if these two gentlemen get together or if there is one person, for example, in Bihar today, Nitish Kumar has, has in charge of the Home Department also. 
this used to happen even in maharashtra usually the home the the chief minister used to take charge of the ministry of home and that is how uh, the, uh, it is not there today in maharashtra because the another party is a, it's a three party government and the ncp is the uh, is the it holds the portfolio of home but so normally you have two but very often just one that is the chief minister so whoever is in charge of home is the person who decides whom to post and these are the postings at the higher level you see at the level of the dgp the level of commissioner of police the letter of superintendent of police ips officers even an asp ips officer if he is asp then he is posted by the government but anything below that all the sdpos in charge of the subdivisions they are mostly deputy superintendents of police and inspectors they are posted by the department by the dgp or the commissioner or the sps now these are the cutting level jobs the jobs which are in in the police station the man in charge of the police station the sho he is more important to the ordinary politician on the ground because he is at the cutting edge he takes all the decisions at, at the police station level and he can do a lot of harm or he can do a lot of good to the political party but he is supposed to actually uh, go after the criminal who commits an offense that we will all understand and not involve somebody who is not committed an offense this is what he is supposed to do the other day i wrote a letter to the police commissioner of delhi telling him that the is uh, his investigation of his officers into the northeast delhi riots delhi northeast riots uh, is flawed and that he should ensure that the his oath to the constitution and to the law is upheld that they should see who are the people really who are responsible for this for the riots but he spoke to me immediately on the phone he also wrote to me later but i was not in, in really interest in, uh, in uh, uh, moved by what he told me because i know there are certain things he cannot do why can't he do it he cannot do it because the government in power puts a lot of in, uh, put lot of pressure and this is not one government any party government that is in power puts this pressure that because they want to continue in power and they also want to give uh, favors to people who are support them and they suppose and the people who support them say we want this man as the sho then they say yes he should be the sho but the power is with the dgp or with the sp in fact so then they write to the dgp or the sp and they bring pressure on him to appoint that person now how how much can the dgp and the sp uh, uh, stop this i mean to prevent this from happening he how much can they oppose this kind of pressure and if they can ward off that pressure i think that is the test of their being good police officers now i joined this police force in 1953 straight from college and i went to mount abu for my training then i was posted in different districts but it, uh, of maharashtra and gujarat because that time we were one state and then Uh, later on i rose up in the ranks and went up to commissioner of police and i've got a lot of in of experience of this and my experience showed me that in 1953 when i joined there were not the people who were in power that is they were freedom fighters like mr moraji desai who was the chief minister at that time they never interfered in postings they took, they 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 allowed you to to be the head of the department that is the men under you would report to you and would respect you and look up to you and you had to be straight and honest and also you had to be a good leader and if you were a good leader you delivered the goods now if there was some in sub inspector in charge of a police station or inspector 
who was not doing his job as per law and as per his conscience and he was just doing something wrong i mean breaking the limits of of uh, of good uh, um, uh, behavior it is the politician who was elected by the people who would bring this to the notice of the sp uh, and even to the dgp's attention or to the dig's attention and then a whole system of putting that right or this transferring that man or, or disciplining him would rest with the police officer now this is not happening today i'll tell you the other day i got a lot of, i've retired long ago i'm now 91 years old before that when i was and i was in service till i was 60 and then i i got a complaint from people because i belong to bombay i'm born here and uh, I know a lot of my classmates and others, people who have worked with me, people who have studied with me. So they came and told me about a certain inspector in charge of a police station. So and, and there is what they told me, and many of them told me, many of them separately told me that he was really uh, playing havoc. So I phoned the police commissioner, who was a very good man, incidentally. and i told him this is what i learned and he said you are right so i said you are saying that i am right but why do you allow this man to continue to to play havoc so then he told me i have written to the government i said what police commissioner cannot take action against a man who is playing havoc you cannot even shift him from there and he said no i have to go to the government and because some rule that the government has made saying that i have we uh, the government will decide these complaints now this is ridiculous that means you are making the the police force into a into a non existent body i mean uh, uh, without any teeth just imagine if there is war and if the government the, the defense minister or somebody down the line decides which uh, which colonel should command which battalion i mean we will lose all all we will lose battles we will lose the war brigadier rajpurohit will tell you that how okay, can it is got to is got to be commanded by his own hierarchy but here we have now total confusion and the police peop, the police force which should look up to their own bosses look up to the to the person in mantrala to the minister or even to Uh, the the small babus who are working in there so it and uh, even policemen ordinary constables they who should come in the orderly room and and plead their cases they go to the mantrala you will find so many of them hanging around in uniform now this is not good governance this is what is going to cause all the trouble and is causing all the trouble the people must understand that people must understand that unless operational independence is given to the police officers and then they, then they can be held accountable but if the if the people in mantrala and the babus and the bureaucracy decide these postings because of of the uh, all this kind of aberrations in the system then you are going to have complete confusion and it is not good for administration or for governance so this is now in my, when i joined service the government used to appoint all ips officers even asp though i was an asp uh, holding charge of a subdivision the government used to tell me where to be uh, where i should work whereas otherwise the dysp is who held charge of the subdivision would be appointed by the dgp and the government never interfered and for postings of of commissioners and sps and and other ranks digs etc it is the dg or at that time there were no dgs igs who would make his his uh, recommendation to the home department home home secretary would put it up to the minister and the minister normally just passed everything once in a while they would make a change when they knew that that person was not behaving properly 
that is all that they did otherwise they just went by what the dgp did but today uh, the government just changes almost all the recommendations of the dg the dg becomes almost a non entity everybody down the line knows it so you have really weakened the post of the dg and the man who should be looking up you should be looking up to the whole department should look up to him and if he is a good man honest man if he is a efficient man and a man with a conscience i think that things will improve considerably then how do you appoint such people now because one person that is the home minister or the chief minister whoever is in charge of home if he decides who should be the dg and who should be the commissioner of police of mumbai a very important position then uh they do it on their whims and they do it looking at their own uh, uh their own interests that is who will listen to us who will do what we want and the whole problem has arisen because even senior ips officers now senior ips officers are lobbying for their position they want this position they want that important position for different reasons some for corrupt motives some because that they want to be feel they want to feel important some because of their children's education there are different reasons but they go and plead with the politicians once you plead and get the posting after the blessings of the politicians in power then you have lost your soul you will have to return the favor you will have to do what they want and i have seen this happening many times i knew one young officer who lobbied lobbied he even sent and he became the commissioner of police and very soon he used to get the letters from the mantrala to appoint so and so appoint so and so to the police station so that is where they are interested the political class is interested in the in the cutting edge and they wanted they want cases to be to be um, decided according to their whims or according to their interest and this is what is happening today so there is no rule of law as such because the police is supposed to investigate cases according to the truth according to what the facts according to the law according to the constitution but they, do they do it they do it in ordinary cases and then they also play havoc with the poor people who are the who are the perpetrators of the crime they remain in prison for long and sometimes for no reason for just for wrong periods which is a very big injustice but the people who should be there they often get out you know that now they 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 just go according to who, who is a, a favorite or who is very close to the person in power now you have seen this case that happened recently about sushant singh rajput it was a it it was just a a a, a, a actor who was a good actor he would have been uh, he was well received by the by the uh, receptive public by the and they uh, but he was probably bipolar and then he uh, committed suicide now he had a girlfriend and that happens with many people and and uh, she tried to uh, regulate his drug use and things like that but finally uh, what happened was that there was a rumor that uh, uh, a gentleman in the a uh, minister in the government a young, young young minister was friendly with him or he went for his parties whether it was true or not was not established finally but probably the gov the government at the center felt that look here is an opportunity to bring down that government now because of that to make a whole case of this and uh, whether it had any effect on the uh, bihar going to have effect on the bihar election nobody could say but certainly it did not finally nobody bothered about it no even the rajputs did not bother about it and uh, Uh, and yet that poor girl was hounded by by the uh, tv channel i have seen it myself the way they went after her it was very very unfair 
and it uh, really hurt you, hurt your conscience to see what was happening. So now, uh, when finally that they tried to get even with the gentleman and uh, arrested him, I don't think that it was a correct arrest. It was not because there was no offence made out. He had not paid his bills. Not paying his bills is not uh, a something which you will say will cause somebody to take his own life. But they made it out that way, and I don't think even if somebody does that, uh, that takes his own life because he has not been paid, uh, it uh, doesn't amount to abetment to suicide. So it was a wrong case. Though I think the person was 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 uh, put behind bars where he legitimately belonged, but for a wrong case. So that, uh, but that, but he managed to get an early hearing in the Supreme Court, where people like Father Stan uh, Swami just um, who who probably does not have anything to do with with. Bhima Koregaon, which is in Pune, and uh, district of of Maharashtra, uh, he he is there, uh, 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 trying to get uh, the government to give allow him to use uh, some uh, uh, help to to have his um, to drink water because he is uh, he has got Parkinson's disease. So these are all injustices that happen because the authorities are so overwhelmed by the people in power that they'll do whatever they want and and that is what is called politicization and this politicization is playing drugs and drakes with the with the system and governance is going uh, going uh, uh, through the dogs we don't have real good governance because of this and i think I don't say that it is only uh, with this particular government. Other parties also have done it in the past, but they were a little careful. I think I have gone through that, and I have seen that uh, they would listen if they, if they, if you were uh, very firm about it. But now nobody wants to be firm because they say he's a very strong leader, and we don't want to cross him. So this is what is happening. So these are uh, some of the uh, problems that. Uh, the police faces, and the public must know that they want. Public always blames the police for saying that they are very uh, corrupt, they are very unfair, they are unjust, and that they uh, uh, don't talk to us properly. They behave like masters, whereas actually they are servants of the people. But but then they must understand how the system works, and how they, these policemen behave in this manner because they have been asked to do things which they are not supposed to do. They are not supposed to bring innocent people and put them in jail. And they are not supposed to allow offenders to get off. But that is what they have been doing. And that is, they are doing it because of the politicization that has set in. So this must be understood by the public. Now, the, the the Supreme Court had, uh, in Prakash Singh's judgment, in that case, they had said that there should be a, uh, uh, a different method of selecting the top officers. That, that only one home minister should not do that. The home minister should have the leader of the opposition also on the, in the committee. And one judge of the serving judge and uh, that is how the three of them sitting down should should decide as to who should be in that particular position and that person should be not only honest i mean financially honest but also he should be competent to carry out those duties and he should he should be in place for two years they, and no transfer so that he doesn't have to look over his shoulders and decide whether he should do the job that is being asked to do by the minister. He won't do it if he knows that he cannot be shifted. The problem is he knows that he will be shifted if he doesn't do it. And that is why he does it. So this is how the system works. And the Supreme Court has understood that and had ordered, but it has not been implemented. Because no political party, of no party at all, 
not a single party wants this done you know i was the i, I was appointed as chairman of a small committee to see why it was not implemented this was mr adwani who made of the first bjp government of mr vajpai he had appointed me and i went to all the states and i met all the chief ministers and all the chief ministers were very reluctant to hand over this power to a committee where the opposition leader and the judge would also be there they wanted to decide that themselves because they want to use that office to get the police which is their main interest to do these kind of things which are not right so uh, uh, we were not able to but uh, to to convince them but but if we also talk to the opposition leaders and suppose there's an opposition leader say from the congress party in uh, in uh, in uh, west bengal i go and meet mr jyoti basu and then uh, his opposition leader some congress leader and he says yes yes we must do it but the congress party in some other state when i go to maharashtra and the congress party is there in power they say no 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 we can't do that we can't uh, give up our power in this way it, and they they don't want to to do what the supreme court has ordered so the supreme court when it was brought to their notice that there is a clear uh, rejection of your judgment then it appoints one judge a retired judge called thomas he goes around and he also find that this is what is happening but still nothing has happened and the same thing goes on so it's a very difficult proposition so my own view is there's no point asking for these reforms when no government wants to do it what has to be done is that you you uh, educate the public and we are doing it in mumbai my own uh, uh, ngo is doing it by going to the colleges at least the young people should know and if the governments know the parties in power they are only interested in votes if they find that they are going to lose all these votes because they are not uh, depoliticizing the police it's only then that this uh, uh, reforms will come now you know in uh, uh, if you see the history of the us uh, the new york police for instance there was what they call tammany hall where the democratic party headquarters in new york used to be posted and all police even the constables would go and uh, to tammany hall and get their posting that was in the in the 19th century after few years now it doesn't happen anymore because the public has become so conscious and same thing in england you know in england uh, recently i read when uh, Theresa May was before she became prime minister. I think she was in charge of home. There was a lady in charge of home, and she thought that she had the power, and she want. And there was some emergency, so she issued an order telling all the uh, policemen who are on on leave to return to duty immediately. And do you know the chiefs of police? They have a committee. They immediately protested. they told her this mrs uh, minister this is not your prerogative or your power you can't do it it's in our we can do that not you and who will do that and who will tell such a thing to the to the politician here in india nobody dares to do it because they know the next day they will be transferred out so this is how the politicization of the police continues and unless the public is totally aware of how the police is politicized why they do things which are wrong they will not understand that this is what should be corrected and that can, correction can only come if they put enough pressure on the political class to ensure that politicization of the police is stopped it is very important to depoliticize because operational independence must be there with the leaders of the police if the leader of the police fails there should be a method by which he can be removed if he is in, incompetent or if he has become corrupt because there is a way um, which has been prescribed 
in the police reforms of the police and even soli sorabji in his uh, uh, model uh, police act he has also mentioned that and that these people should go to the same committee to have the person removed otherwise he remains there for 2 years he doesn't have to bother about what will happen to him because he has reached that position and the other person cannot transfer him out like he does he does today today i had a very unfortunate this in maharashtra my own state i keep a very close sharp look at how the police force uh, operates and and functions and we had a very good dgp uh, mr jaiswal excellent man he was police commissioner also before he became dgp and uh, uh, he was one of the persons who followed the law and he was a very honest and everything a good person to be appointed and suddenly he says i don't want to work here anymore so i make inquiries why does he want to go he is going to be a big loss to us and then we learn that the amount of pressure on him from the government to do this do that it's it's uh, not a bjp government today it's uh, some kind of maha agadi that is all uh, big gathering of three parties and they put a, a lot of pressure to say arrest mr uh, for example this uh, anup goswami was arrested for something which they should not have arrested him for because there was not a no offense in that case you you can't call it a bedbed to suicide if if a fellow does not pay bill he obviously anup goswami does not like to pay for whatever he orders so and uh, he Uh, the other person, because the amount was large, decided to commit suicide, and uh, so. Uh, but that doesn't uh, amount to abetment to suicide. Many of these abetment to suicide is a it's a very very unfortunate law that is being misused. It was the abetment to suicide law was made because of the number of of dowry demands and deaths following those dowry demands. in the state of gujarat if for of all states and the number of girls who used to commit suicide and that is how they thought of making this law and now it is being used for for any love affair <laughs> it's being used suppose somebody um, had a love affair and then after that that or that love affair goes sour and one party he uh, exits from there the opposite party commits suicide the other band is arrested i was really shocked you know about this kind of misuse of this of this power of this law that requires a whole uh, whole uh, discussion which i am about to uh, carry out there in, in my own way but uh, this is by the way that uh, the police you do whatever the government in power wants them to do whereas what they should do is do according to the law and this is the law and if the law has to be implemented you know i remember that when i was a commissioner of police in thane the i had an i had a uh, visit by one of the mlas a very important the mla was very close to the chief minister and i i knew i knew that so he came to see me and he said and he tells me now how long are you going to put this pressure on these bootleggers why do why don't you you loosen your pressure i said but you have made the law i have not made the law so he said no but the law uh, i know that we have made the law and we can't change it but you can certainly relax i said no i am not going to relax and i suggest that you go back and change the law if you want us to relax but this is the kind of pressure they put and if you can withstand that pressure then uh, it's uh, without getting uh, uh, transferred out now they asked me you know i given a lecture after that to some ias uh, officers in in uh, rajasthan in that mathur it, uh, it, they have got a whole whole uh, uh, college with institution for in service training and they were there for in service training and they had asked me to talk to them and i 
I said that uh, this is uh, this is how I managed to carry out my work without having these people on my on my uh, back. And they said, "How?" I said, "Look, I had the police force on my side. The police force was on my side because I did them justice. I never did any injustice to anyone. Give them proper hearing and did whatever." I thought was right and explained to them, and uh, and uh, if I was wrong, then I should agree that I was wrong. So they were on my side, and the people were on my side because we were uh, on their side. We were with the people. So if you have got the police force and the people on your side, the government will think hundred times before shifting you out. But this thing, this is uh, a, a fact of life. But this is happening. Not everybody gets a chance to get the police force and the and the public on its side. So they should have the whole system in such a way that politics that the police force is depoliticized. You now the greatest uh, uh, example of the evils of politicization you will see in say in Delhi in nineteen eighty four. After Mrs. Gandhi was assassinated, then there were a la, ra, widespread anti-Sikh riots. Now, why did the police not act very swiftly? They felt that the party in power is the is the Congress party. The mother of the of the chief of the prime minister is in has been assassinated. So we will not we will not be very. Uh, Diligent in our job of stopping it. So this is what happened. And then later on, in 2002, after the Godra train matter, there was a, a program of of the Muslims. Poor people were killed. So many of them. I personally have gone and seen in Ahmedabad. And and uh, it, it was because of the politicization of the police. Because if the police are told to go slow. Whereas they should not go slow, they should be very vigilant to see that people are not killed. In fact, in Gujarat, there were three or four districts where the SPs, young fellows, they were very uh, firm. And there the number of, of uh, killings was certainly much less. But they were all transferred out within 15 days. They were shifted because they had not cooperated with the pogrom. So you see, these are things that clearly show you that politicization of the force is the worst kind of thing that can happen. And why are the other countries in the West so forward? I mean, so, um, so we, we look up to them and say that they are doing things much better than us. But why? Because if they have a uh, police force is is not politicized there. You know, I, I during my time, I, I had occasion to meet the the Commissioner of Police London, Metropolitan Police, what you call Scotland Yard. Sir Peter Imbert was the person at that time. And I went and met him to discuss our mutual uh, problems. And I said, uh, what do you do about, about these uh, uh, corruption? And uh, we had a long talk about how we uh, would tackle corruption, particularly in the special forces. And then I then asked him about the transfers. I said, how do you tackle the, tra the, the interference in transfers? That, he said, what is that? So I said that when they ask you to shift post somebody in this police station and that, they said, no, this ne never happened. I've never heard about it. So you see, the, it's, it's, uh, this is the way politicization happens, that you interfere with postings and transfers. Now, whenever you post people like that, you get corruption going through the roof. You can't even, and the police commissioner can't even uh, shift the man out. As I show, I gave you one example of that. When I talked to the commissioner, he said, I have written to the government. And the government decides whether that corrupt fellow should be out or not. And if the corrupt man is also sharing his, his uh, whatever he gets uh, illegally, then you will not, you will have him there at the for the rest of your service. So this is, these are the things that happen and it is only the people who can really put it right. They have to be, they have to be um, constantly told about it. 
and they have to take up this matter and if the government knows that it will lose votes only then they will stop politicizing the police so so this is what i wanted to uh, talk to you about about politicization and uh, and how it is affecting the quality of life and how the rule of law is not respected here because of the politicization of the police thank you so much for hearing me out uh, and uh, i would be happy to answer any questions you you would like to put i'm quite sure that many young people would like to know what happened uh, thank you thank you thank you so much sir now i i uh, put it open for the for the questions if there are any questions we would be happy to take them thank you if one person asks then others will start you see otherwise nobody wants to be the first that i have always seen so let's see who going yeah. who should ask the first question yeah i think uh, uh, the students can take the lead but yes give them the lead i'll i'll uh, open up the session sir all right thank you very much for a very uh, very very uh, open and experienced exposure on this subject yeah uh, this subject has always been actually uh, double sided for majority of us on one side is the rule of law which legally ethically morally the police must follow on the other side there are practical realistic pressures of the modern day society the political uh, and so on and therefore to find a fine balance between the two and support the society in correct policing maintaining the internal uh, law and order which is the prime responsibility becomes essentially important sir therefore what my questions to you question to you is how do you maintain this fine balance between the legality and ethics of the moral policing sir you see it's not easy to do it today because it's uh, uh, you know i'll tell you uh, i uh work in at a different time so is very unfair on my part to say that the police force has become this and become that because i worked at the different uh, people and uh, uh i remember that you uh, i'll tell you about my own experience and you'll be able to understand it was in mumbai in 1985 when there were communal riots now in communal riots if you want to stop them it's not difficult at all you have to find out who are the instigators of the riots the people who kill and get killed are the poor people who living in the slums etc but the instigators don't kill they don't get killed also they are sitting in their offices or in their mosques or in their temples or whatever so the, who are the people who are instigating and in i uh, found that in uh, my city of mumbai at that time the instigators belonged to a party called the shiva sena and that they were basically uh, you know they were organized in a certain manner they had what they call the shaka pramukhs shaka pramukhs means in each locality there was one fellow who is in charge he was the like a capo you know in the underworld and uh, he his order his without him the top leadership would not be able to function now the top leaders don't go down and killing or they don't know how to do it even they don't know how to even uh, get people they can speak they can talk they can uh, but they cannot uh, really organize them and uh, i said that we should not touch the big leader who at that time bal thakre and his and his number two people there were about 20 of them they should not be touched they are ministers and things like that get hold of all the top capos you know those 51 or 52 each they were in each police station one 
and let us put them back they will they want their their whole ability to to operate would be flattered and we did that immediately immediately there was absolute quiet the next day and then i said that perhaps the opposite side which the muslim side which usually builds up the defense they uh, they might get a little out of hand so let us take their their leaders who are the ones who give them the arms and things to defend themselves and they are the underworld dons you know in bombay they have all those dons and these dons are usually many of them are muslim dons so we got them all locked up in next day so the whole thing was now the the repercussions were very interesting there was peace total peace but the the pressure on the chief minister to release these people was so great that not only uh, the shiv sena chief went every day to the mantralaya or to the house of the chief minister to please release them and i promised that i'll do that i will be very uh, quiet and the muslim their M- congress mps from up <laughs> they flew to bombay to get and put pressure on the congress chief minister to release all those dons you see because they were the ones who were probably financing their their political activity so this is how those pressures came and that pressure naturally the ch- chief minister put on me so do they are so do they you know in marathi he said please leave them leave them so i kept on uh, and then fortunately the chief secretary was a was a good person he was he became the home, union home secretary later mr rd pradhan he recently died he supported me in a big way so the two of us really put a balwak but we put a stop to this and we said at least for 15 days let them remain so we made a target of 15 days we managed 12 <laughs> after that the chief minister himself said no i'm going to if you all are not doing it we will do it and release them but this kind of of pressure from the pol- political class which goes against the good um, sense of of uh, security of the of, of the public that has to be balanced and uh, uh, i i know i used the same tactic when uh, there were riots uh, there were communal riots in amdabad in 1985 80 85 yes and the riots in bombay were 84 85 there were riots in amdabad i was not i was not involved because i am from maharashtra gujarat had already been bifurcated and we we had uh, uh, the the prime minister called me i was then the dg of the crpf and he said please go to amdabad and take charge as dg and stop it so i said that i require only a few days but i should nobody should interfere he gave me that um, that total this i said i am doing no transfers nothing you tell them that i am going to rough rough shot over them and and uh, i put the all the vhp people who were writing all scurrilous uh, messages on the walls and on the muslim side again the same gang lords and uh, and that is how we put them within 7 days it was all over so it is you can put it but then you have to have the political side political people on your side if the political people don't want to cooperate then there will be a problem but in those days they were supposed to they were they were themselves desperate so so fortunately i was in that era this era does not exist now it's uh, very difficult i agree because when the 2002 riots took place in gujarat when i went and asked the the dg and other senior officers why did you allow uh, one minister to sit in your control room and uh, dg's control room one in cp's control room minister was sitting and directing operations i said how can you do that how did you allow i would never allow so they said sir it is quite a different regime you you can't um, you have to be uh, you have to be ready for any kind of 
of uh, repercussion if you don't follow the, these kind of orders. So, you see, it, it's a different. I, I agree that I had not worked in under such circumstances. I have no person. I have no right to to criticize. But here, I have tell you what I have done, and it was a much better time, and we could definitely have our have our say. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir, for your uh, elaborate uh, answer. And thank you, uh, Sir Brigadier Jeevan Purohit, for your excellent question as well. Uh, sir, uh, my observation is that uh, after the service, uh, many people are inclined to join politics, right? And uh, this is all actually a very debatable issue also, right? So um, my uh, question is, especially in the context uh, of the, the senior IPS officer joining the politics, right, immediately after... Uh, you know, uh, their uh, retirement or superannuation. So do, don't you think that uh, whether uh, a procedure needs to be uh, installed, there has to be some procedure uh, for a police officer to not to allow to join politics, at least at least for two or three years post-retirement? Uh, what is your take on it? You see, this, this has been happening for some time, but uh, we find that people who who uh, feel, you know, the person to join politics perhaps are those who feel left out of all the excitement that, uh, uh, you know, they, when they are in service, they are in, uh, they are in the public eye and they, uh, they like that adulation, perhaps they didn't get it when they are out of uh, service. So they uh, want to continue to be in the public eye through this method of joining politics. But now it is becoming much more, and that is uh, uh, very worrisome. And I agree that uh, there should be some kind of of, uh, of method by which you cannot, at the moment, by law, stop anyone from from joining politics. You can't. But you can certainly put in place certain, um, uh, you know a wall, a certain wall, fire wall, whatever you call it, to see that they do not uh, take undue advantage of their being at the end of their service to do harm to the body politic, to do harm to the rule of law. Because if that was their intention, then of course there is always... I can tell you one case in Bombay, which I know about, where the commissioner of police uh, after uh, he he went and joined a political party here in Mumbai itself, and he sat on the on the, the days with the with the with Mr. Bal Bal Thakre, and he was there. But the people, the followers of the Shiv Sena themselves said, "We don't. Why should why should we lose our chance?" And this man was just come just been the commissioner. And he was on the other side. Suddenly, he comes here, and they they put so much pressure on their own boss that the man's uh, um, uh, you know uh, attempt to join politics itself was was uh, totally uh, erased. So this is what happened. I've seen myself, but these are things that each case is different. But perhaps people are thinking about. Um, giving it a, 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 what is that, a break. You said two, three years. I thought they said one year, then after a year. But if you say two, three years, that would be better still. But by that time, then people will forget about this man. You know this man of the, B, uh, the DG of uh, Bihar, he had decided to join, but I don't think he got the ticket. So with the result that he wasted all his time. So I think these people should be given a chance to 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 hang themselves. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. So yeah. another question from uh, my side would be: uh, It's regarding uh, the practical challenges uh, that uh, you know that police officers on the ground they face because of the unnecessary interference uh, in the investigations. Right, because uh, I was also practicing in the Bombay High Court, and uh, you know, off the table, uh, off the record, many discussions happens there also. So, uh, considering the factual reality of uh, 
not only Bombay police, but uh, all over India, right? And uh, unnecessary interference of uh, the, uh, you know, the, the political masters uh, into the investigation. So, so how, how can we, uh, how can the loyal policing, we call it loyal policing, or as uh, Brigadier Rajkumar used the word, moral policing, could survive? In, in all the chaos, like a, a young a young boy wants to join the police service, right? Uh, he always look for ideals. He always look for uh, you know the people to look up, right? But do you think that uh, such environment still exists today for the young generation? Do you think that uh, the investigation can really be free from political influences, sir? What is your take on it as a police officer as well as as a uh, as a person who 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 runs an NGO and who uh, who fights for the rights of the people? I think that, look, much depends on the leadership of the police. If the police leadership is quite clear that they know the, what they have to do, that they have given, a, they have taken an oath and that they will follow that oath and that they will not get in, uh, influenced by, by, the, by, the, by the political class. So the political class has its own interests. And uh, their interest mainly is to remain in power or to get power. So they want this done and that done. But if, you, if it is not the right thing and it is not according to the facts of the case, I don't think that you should uh, do it or agree to do it. And I know many officers who don't do it. I mean, they say that, look, we, we can't do that. They do try to, to show that they are willing to come to a certain position halfway or quarter the way, but just that is just to remain remain their troops, safeguard their own their own uh, position. But uh, they they have a conscience, and with their conscience, they say that look, we cannot do this. This we cannot do. If and uh, uh, if you want to get this done, then perhaps the best thing is to not have me here in position because I will not be able to do it. But it's difficult for many. I don't see many officers taking up these stands these days. They are more interested in their own, in their own. Uh, uh, that's unfortunate. We have to build up a young uh, youth, which is more, um, you know, uh, I mean, with strong character, with a sense of values that uh, does not uh, just rely on becoming rich quickly overnight without doing any work. This is what many people want to do these days. It's unfortunate, but true. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, one more question again from my side. Okay. Uh, see, there was a news uh, a few days back uh, regarding uh, granting uh, security to topmost uh, industrialists in India. What? Right. So. Uh, there was a news before, a few days back, regarding granting a security, a zip plus security, uh, to the topmost industrialist in India. Uh -huh. right? uh, the, uh, yes, yes, yes. So my question is that I was, I was actually wondering, right? I mean, it has never happened before. But under what law can uh, such security be granted, or whether granting such security uh, is actually, uh, you know, within the legal parameters? Let down uh, by CRPF, or what is your take on it? What is the what is the law says about it? Granting security to the industrialist people. You see, I, I was I worked in the CRP for six years as a junior officer. I was the DIG in Hyderabad, and later on I was in the headquarters also as D, as D, DD administration, and finally I became DG of the CRPF for seven weeks before I was sent to Gujarat, but. So I know that the CRPF does not have this role of going and give, giving personal um, protection to industrialists. And, uh, uh, but I also agree that certain, in, like Mr. Mukesh Ambani, for instance, he has got in uh, this protection. I think that if any harm comes to him, then this nation would be in a bad way because he's uh, he contributes quite a substantial part of the GDP, and, and we are always in the problem about all that. So we uh, we also have to look to the nation's uh, uh, interests also. So I think that giving him protection, but whether it should be given from CRPF or just 
the bombay police i don't know the bombay police should have some some kind of branch or arm i had i had recommended which uh, uh, has uh, not policemen because policemen are required for street duties but for duties like this which are often they are often called upon to do and then they can become particularly you know there was an army officer retired colonel who used to uh, who was very good at training these people and i thought that he could be given that job of training uh, a force that would uh, provide these services and they and the, uh, those people won't mind being paying for it i'm sure that mukesh is paying for all that whatever he is he is being given, provided it doesn't matter to him at all money is not a problem so uh, but for the police force it is a big problem because they are they have been sanctioned on the basis of certain uh, roles and if they are not performing those roles but doing another role then that that particular role should have another uh, organization to provide that role because it should be a government organization that gives that then it gives that much more security the private security may not be able to really perform the uh, the security role so there are certain industrialists who are certainly in a bracket where we may where the state may have to see that they are not in any way harmed but it's a difficult i agree with you that it's a difficult choice because sometimes as you know now they do all sorts of funny thing that a big industrialist sitting abroad also now waiting to be repatriated and if they had asked for security what did you do what do you do about that so there are lots of answers this is a very tricky question and may have to be discussed and and a solution found because there is there it is not that we just say that we cannot give you security at all because if the person is eliminated then you are going to face a very major crisis so that also you have to take into consideration yeah thank you sir uh, is there any any other question from the participants please or maybe you can ask uh, any question about not only just police administration or reforms maybe if you are interested in knowing sir's view on terrorism also or maybe any other question okay so if uh, there are no more questions and uh, almost uh, it's a time now uh, so sir uh, let me let me let me thank you for your time and uh, thank you for uh, really joining us and uh, enlightening us uh, you know to the to the scenario that uh, the country is actually experiencing not only in terms of uh, you know the policing because i believe somewhere that uh, the political influence is everywhere not only uh, in the police administration but also you know in other departments also as well as in the private sector as well so actually the problem is uh, very grave and uh, very complicated as well but yes the solution has to be there and solution i believe lies in the hands of the people of india we are the people of india the constitution of india is with us so something i feel that we all need to understand our constitutional rights our constitutional liberty and with that we can collectively you know i believe find the solution oh there is one question there is one question coming sure sure uh, Vijay George, please, please, you can you can ask your question. There is one question coming. Uh, Mr. George. Uh, Mr. George. Uh, Mr. George, can you can you hear us? I think there is some a technical problem. We are not uh, able to hear anything. Uh, Mr. George, you can write your question here in the chat box, if possible. I'll read it out. Uh, okay. So, 
I think uh, we are we are not able to uh, collect. Uh, sir, uh, well then we have to conclude uh, this program. And sir, thank you so much. And uh, have a good day, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.